Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is another episode of the Raycaster game in C++ series. And in this video we are going to continue by implementing, starting to implement the actual map editing functionality in our editor. So as you can see I have gone ahead and opened up my project directory. Now inside of this I am going to open up uh, not renderer actually. I am going to open up editor.h and editor.cpp along with main.cpp in Vim. Uh, and uh, with these open I am going to we, now in order to implement the map editing functionality we will need to access the map from the editor and since we need to modify the map we will need to take a reference to the map so in here I am going to say map and uh, uh, we will need to of course include the header file first so I am going to go here hashtag include and we are going to include map.h now I am going to go down here and this is going to be one of the say map and map this hand sign of course means that this is a reference now we have modified the signature of the run function so of course we need to go here and modify it here as well so map and map like that and uh, uh, yes well that works and now i'm going to open up main.cpp and inside of this when we are calling our run function we need to make sure that we provide the editor with the map as well so we are going to just pass the map here and with that we should have a reference to our map in the editor and now we are, can modify it like we want to now when the user presses a key or even if the user doesn't press a key we need to take the user's mouse position convert that into uh, map coordinates and then use that to well if the user is not pressing anything we can display a boundary around the cell that we are currently you know hovering over and then when we actually press that we need to modify that cell and do yeah change the behavior and all of that so uh, how, how are we actually going to do that so for this we'll need to do a couple of things first of all I'm going to uh, go down here uh, here you can see that uh, uh, we are using our uh, mouse position here we are when we are doing the la last mouse position and we are also using this here so we are we can just you know get the mouse position once and use that uh, instead of having to recalculate it or actually yeah let's let's do that so we are going to create an ss vector to i which we are going to call mouse position and we are going to set that to ss mouse get position relative to the window okay uh, we'll get that position and then we are going to go down here and we are going to just set the last mouse position to this mouse position and now we don't need to calculate this again here so uh, that works and we can just like have it like this so and uh, now we are going to go down here and this mouse position remember is in window coordinates so pixel coordinates uh, while our view is changing which means that our view coordinates may be different than the pixel coordinates so we'll need to take this window and map that to a to the uh, actual view coordinates and then map that to the map coordinates. So let's go here, create an SS vector to F called the world position, and we are going to set this to window dot map pixel to coordinates, and we are going to pass it our mouse position as the actual pixel coordinates, and it's going to uh, you know basically map that to the correct view coordinates but the world position and then we in order to access the map position we're going to call this map we're going to take our world position and divide that by map dot uh, get uh, cell uh, size yeah that will give us our correct map position now uh, when we are doing this uh, this actually gives us like uh, our map position in float coordinates we might want it in integer coordinates so for that we will first of all cast our uh, this to a vector to well actually uh, let's just leave it at that it should automatically cast it so i'm going to go ahead and uh, sf vector to i let's cast this actually to a vector to i and uh, we are going to put a bracket here so that we don't have to cast the other value as well and yeah that should that should automatically convert that to integer coordinate map position now once we have got that in order to change this uh, we will first of all just uh, draw a uh, outline that would represent like which cell we are hovering over so in order to draw that we are going to create an sf rectangle shape and actually we can initialize this once so we are going to go down here create an sf rectangle shape uh, rectangle shape uh, call shape uh, rectangle actually let's just call it our uh, cell and we are going to of course need to include the correct header it did not detect that automatically so we are going to say sfml slash graphics slash render uh, rectangle shape all right so after we have got this we are going to go down here and uh, we are going to say uh, here we'll, we can just set this to the map size so we are going to go here say rectangle 
dot uh, rectangle shape you've got that we call actually that cell cell dot set size and we are going to set that to the map we're going to update it every frame in case the map ever changes it should not but uh, we uh, might add an option to modify it and then we want to change this as well so we are going to just say map dot get cell size uh, and actually this needs to be a vector tool so we are going to have to pass map dot get cell size twice like that uh, actually this needs to be a vector tool as not uh, it does not have an overload for full float so we'll uh, okay we'll just change that to take a vector to f here instead all right so that will get, uh, set the cell size correctly now for the actual position of the cell we are going to say cell dot set position and we are going to set this to uh, our map position multiplied by our map dot get cell size and the reason it's different than using world position directly is because uh, this way we are taking the uh, integer coordinates and not the floating point coordinates and of course it uh, gives an error we need to cast this to an integer and hopefully that would work now uh, actually uh, yeah that does not work because uh, uh, well uh, yeah we'll need to cast this to a vector 2f because it will uh, it uh, the set position method requires a vector 2f so yeah this should work so we get that and our cell position is set correctly and then we can just say window dot draw and we can give it our cell so that should draw the cell but uh, one more thing we'll need to do is uh, well actually let's test that out first so i'm going to go here and make and what you should see is that if i go here i do get a, a white uh, this here and uh, actually yeah that's that's kind of working actually so you can see i can move around and it seems like it's drawing an uh, outline here and yeah that's seems kind of uh, all right i guess so i can zoom in and uh, yeah that that seems to work even though i did not expect it to display an outline by default but uh, well we'll go up here and the reason it's uh, drawing the outline automatically is because the map is being drawn after this so uh, yeah that's uh, actually working quite well uh, another thing i will do is that i will go here and i will get our uh, cell and set color set fill color to sf color green and we are going to say sf color green here and that should uh, basically kind of make it a bit more obvious which cell we are hovering over because we already have some white stuff so yeah that that looks quite well i can zoom in and you can see that that uh, actually works and it looks quite nice so with that we have got our outline working but we need when the user actually presses the mouse button we need to change the actual map some way or another then uh, you know basically like if the user presses the left mouse button then we are going to uh, draw a cell at that position and if the user presses the left mouse button while pressing shift we are going to array the cell so let's uh, go ahead and implement that now in order to actually do that we are going to have to go here and uh, uh, yeah, we've got all of that. So I'm going to close this and we're going to go under editor.cpp We are going to check if if sf mouse is button pressed and we are going to get sf mouse uh, Let's say left. So if the left mouse button is pressed, then we are going to uh, We are going to get our map position and we are going to change our map accordingly However, the problem is currently it's not possible to actually modify the map because if I uh, open our map up you can see that uh, get grid just returns a constant uh, map grid so that's uh, not working but we can uh, implement a function for modifying that and we are not going to return the map grid directly uh, instead we are going to have a this here void set map uh, cell and it's going to allow us to give it a integer x value and an integer y value uh, which will be the actual value that we need and then we are going to uh, also uh, just to perform a check to make sure that it's within bounds and then we'll uh, you know implement it so we are going to go ahead and open up map.cpp like that and we are going to implement the uh, function so we are going to say void map and we are going to say uh, set map cell we are going to of course have an int x and an int y now we are going to check if our x is uh, l uh, greater than zero and our x is less than the map dot uh, well actually we don't need to say map we can just say grid dot size and uh, actually this needs to be y since our grid is y first so we, if our y is greater than 0 and our y is less than grid size and our x is greater than 0 and our x is less than grid y dot size then we are going to uh, then we are going to modify of course we actually need another argument int value 
so if that's the case then we are going to go ahead and say grid y x is equal to value like that uh, and we'll need to perform this check because the user can move the mouse anywhere and uh, some points may be outside of the map then we need to make sure that we don't actually access an out of bounds index so we need to have an int value here as well and uh, yeah that works quite well so now let's go back under editor.cpp and if this button is pressed less mouse button we are going to say map uh, dot set map cell and we are going to uh, pass it our map position dot x and our map position dot y and for the value we are going to just say one so it's going to set that value to one whenever we press the mouse button uh, and actually uh, we can say if our ss keyboard uh, is key pressed and we are going to say ss keyboard and uh, uh, shift so if the shift uh, left shift actually if the left shift key is pressed then we are going to say zero else we are going to say one so let's go ahead and run that run make here and you can see that uh, when this runs i can go here and if i press anywhere you can see it automatically draws a block there and i can use this to erase an actual wall and if i go back into my game you can see that the wall that i just erased has been erased and now i get this but if i go here and erase that now it has vanished so we can edit our map in real time and test it out as well, as well. so you can see we have got uh, uh, three of these here uh, which are uh, standing here these three pillars I can make that into a full wall if I want and the changes are reflected in real time uh, and if I want and of course if I uh, can zoom around and move around as well uh, I can modify and anywhere and it works correctly so if I go here uh, I can go uh, like that and I can make a walk here and you can see that it appears so yeah you can see that we are being able to modify our map and that's working quite well of course currently there is no way to save the map and we need to implement a way to do that but uh, we'll do that in the next video so stay tuned for that make sure to like and subscribe as well and share, share this video with other people and i'll see you in the next one and uh, uh, bye